Hey, what's up? This is Faithful Eagle here. I just want to say welcome, family, and welcome to another exciting video. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll never miss out on my amazing content. I hope you're all doing fantastic today, but, but before we dive into today's content, I want to give you a huge shout out to all our amazing subscribers. I want to say thank you guys for your amazing support. Guys, I took me a long way and, and in fact, when you subscribe, like, and share the video, you're actually helping advance the gospel, improving the YouTube algorithm, and most importantly, you're obeying God in Matthew 28. Go and make disciples of all nations. So therefore, I just want to say thank you. Without further ado, let's see today in today's video. We, uh, was, we had a great time. We wanted to play this. They enjoyed listening to me play. You know, knowing that it was not in vain his death, like knowing that he, when he left this earth, that I felt peace, like that he made things right with God, knowing that everything was right. So, next thing I'd like to share is like, I recently had, like, I, I really don't like sharing this a lot, but I had something going on to three men that would kept going on non-stop not with me. You know, their names were Jarrett, Hudson, and Solis. They would always come, like, up to me, ready to start some trouble or something. And these men called them, but no disrespect to them. I called them false prophets because like, they were acting like they knew it all. But I felt God told me last night, it's over. They're not going to bother me no longer. And knowing that everything God has is handed in the midst of it. You know, also, this last thing I'm going to share real quick. I had a, a friend, her name was Miley. And like, I was like such a jerk or like acted all silly goose and everything. And knowing that like throughout everything, like everything from the past is like, this is a word of advice I can advise y'all. Don't let the pain from the past continue to bother you. Just give it to God and let him turn it over. Because God can make everything good. And he can make every problem, everything, every trial, every storm, whatever you may face, a blessing. And I want to share that with y'all tonight. Thank you, brother. Thank you for letting me take this time. It's you. And, you know, thank you, brother. Like, and thank you, Lord. Like, thank You're you welcome. for also coming out last night and supporting me in MLC ministry. Thank you, uh, Rev Cicado, for coming out last night. To, I'll tell you, it was a real good service we had last night. It, hey, it was real good. And knowing that, like, whatever God gives you to speak, be obedient unto Him and not unto man. Thank you for this time tonight, as brother faithful. All yours, brother. All right, thank you, brother. All right, guys. Um, so um, yeah, definitely um, you give Michael a cheer if you want for um sharing his um praise report with us. And um, thanks for Michael hanging in there. Um, have mic problems, but you. you you got through it and thanks for everyone's patience by the way um through that so um i do want to make a quick announcement before i get on with the preaching um because my sermon won't be that long because i know we'll do some time for q a at the end um so i want to make an announcement um there's been confusion going on um concerning gossip and we just let you know what we do here in gospel grace ministry if someone um gossip about um another person that's outside of our ministry here. Uh, we'll tell them you need to go to that person first directly and clear things out. 
<clears throat> Otherwise, if you don't, and I find out that person has lied, you be permanently banned from this room. So let's not do that. <laughs> um, I don't like um, slandering and gossip. It's not nice, and um, it causes a lot of damage. So, so if anyone, you heard about something, you can just shut it down or just talk to that person directly. Go to the source. Um, and on that note, um, I want to make an announcement uh, because there's a lot of confusion here. Um, in this ministry, um, uh, we do not support homosexuality because it's sin in the Bible. And we're, this is a Christian um, event, so the Bible says so. It's pretty straightforward, and that's why. Um, I respect your guys' different beliefs. Um, it's part of the rules. If you have someone that disagrees with your beliefs, um, be respectful. We can be kind in our disagreements. Um, we don't have to be troll or negative. If there's a right way to handle things for people that don't see things the way you see things. And you don't know that in life. Especially if you're out here and going to preach, not just in rec room, but in life, you're going to have a lot of people who don't line up with your beliefs. Right? All right. On that note, that's it. And now we're going to go on to a message. Oh. <laughs> All right, Sasha Carol. <laughs> be nice. Um, Michael got it through there, so. Okay, so today, um, let's get on to the message. The title of my message today um, is going to be applied to Christians, right? It's going to be focused on my message mainly. It's called The Sin of Silence. The Sin of Silence. So, in fact, it does. it is a sin um, when we see our brother or sister in Christ who are Christians and they've gone astray. Mean that the, the con they went to a path that's not a Christian living. Um, maybe they can be worldly, or maybe they're doing something that's going against the Bible scriptures. But when we don't speak up to our brothers and sisters, you know, who are in Christ, Christians, we are t too. We commit a sin when we don't talk to our brothers and sisters about their error. Now, there's a right way to go about, it and there's a wrong way. The right way is to be um, kind, be humble. Just tell them, just tell person, say, "Look, I love you, but this is not what God has for you. Um, God has something much better for you." So that's kind of like the approach you want to go. And my first verse, I'll be going to. And don't worry, because I do preach a lot of verses here. Um, I will uplist up on YouTube later. My YouTube channel, same thing by username Rec Room. You can find out on my bio. Um, so you keep a lookout, and um, I'll upload my sermons for YouTube that way. So you can watch the verses and provide notes of my sermon. So you can look at it through a Google document later on after done uploading this. Okay, so my first verse is Luke 15, verses 4 through 7. And we be going through the King James Version. Translation. All right, starting verse 4. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does he not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until until he finds it. And when he hath found it, he layeth on his shoulders and rejoicing. And verse 6, And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, I have found my sheep that was lost. I say unto you likewise, Joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than a ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. So this is a parable Jesus is using um, to explain... Um, God and how God's kingdom work and how we as Christians for those who are Christians here uh, we are supposed to go after our brothers and sisters and we're supposed to rescue them we're supposed to save them from living a life of destruction right and Jesus is saying that um, revealing that God's love using parable or a comparison as you will as a shepherd going after the sheep that means God loves each one every one of us so so much that he will Leave the 99 just to go after that one person, just to get them back. So I just show you just God's unconditional love towards all humanity, to every person. And that applies to everyone who's listening in this room. God has gone out of his way um, for you because he, he, he loves you that much. Okay, and in next verse is Hebrews 13, 17. Obey all them that have rule over you. Submit yourself for which to watch over your souls. That they must give account as they do it with joy and not with grief, for it is unprofitable for you. So this verse is talking about. This is mainly going to apply to anyone who's um, ordained 
by a church. Now, I'm not ordained. I'm just a preacher here in a rec room video game preaching God's word. Um, but if you attend a local church, maybe you have a pastor or an elder, um, you're supposed to submit their authority. And how we apply today in uh, rec room ministry is I ask you, you go to the Bible because the Bible is the supreme authority. The Bible has higher authority than any preacher or pastor. Regardless of what they say, if they don't say it lines up with the Bible, then you just don't listen to them. You listen to what the Bible says. And that's kind of how we handle it here in August Grace Ministries. Um, of course, me as preaching God's word, I'm still held responsible by God. But what I share and what I say with you, even with people here um, in the virtual environment, does not matter. Um, these are still real people behind the screens. And um, you guys are still valuable. And I still help help count for God of what I say and what I preach. So I have to make sure I'm preaching God's word faithfully and make sure that those who are serving under this ministry, that um, I can be the good under shepherd, but Jesus is the true shepherd. So a lot of people just want to make a, a um, small comment. A lot of people are so quick to be preachers. A lot of people are so quick to be pastors, but people don't understand the burden that comes with that. Because you're, you're stepping in the role of leadership and you're whole count for God over the lives that you're leading. So, in other words, make sure God called you first. <laughs> and you're not doing out your own selfish de desire, but you're doing it for the glory of Jesus Christ. And, and you have a love for people. Alright, sorry, little rant. Sorry about that. Back on to the message. Um, and this is another verse just to go over about when you, when you watch our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, Galatians 6 1 says, Brethren, if a man overtaketh in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, least also be tempted. So when we see um, a brother or sister in Christ, uh, we should say something when they fall into sin. Uh, we should do it with, um, with humbleness. We should be with kind. We have to be like Jesus. Uh, we shouldn't be over judgmental or harsh. And we also got to be careful. And it says, Those who are spiritual, that means those who are mature spiritually, those who are wise, like in a church, or who's been a Christian a long time, um, and people who are actually gifted at talking to people, um, those are the time people should try to talk to people who might be struggling, right? Okay, and then, of course, this whole sermon is going to talk about the silence when it is a sin. There's time to keep silence, but this is going to be a time when you don't keep silence as a Christian. Okay, another sin is when you don't speak for the voiceless. Basically, people who are unable to speak for themselves. Um, and then read a verse for that. So James 1.27. Pure religion and undefiled before God. And the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. And keep yourself unspotted from the world. See, uh, James says, if you want pure religion... That's unspotted. Go after, attend the needs of orphans, widows, in their affliction, in their suffering. In other words, if you want to be perfect, help the poor. Help the afflicted. Help those who are in um, much less fortunate position than you may be. Right? And this is what's honoring. This is what God's like. This is what it means to be a Christian. We, we get our hands dirty and we help those around us the best way we can. If we're able to meet that need, I understand we all have different needs here, but always pray, ask God, how can I meet someone else's need? What can I do? And you know what? The least thing you can do, you can pray for somebody, you know, and don't underestimate that. You can at least pray for somebody. So on that note, um, I did a video on YouTube on this. Um, January 11th was Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Um, you check out my YouTube channel. I did a awareness video on child um, human trafficking to help spread awareness because you know what? Children are um, are a gift from God. Um, they're innocent. Um, they're full of joy. And it's so, so wrong when people do evil acts against them. And I pray that God will use people to stop them. Um, and on that note, if you know anybody that's of um, that's an adult, but they're talking to you inappropriately, please report it in rec room. Do not put up with that. That's not okay. Um, you know anything that's inappropriate conversations, definitely report that. 
user. You know, help make Rec Room a safe place. And on that note, so... In Isaiah 117 is another verse going do that. Yep, God will punish them, absolutely. Yoniak, you will. God will have his justice. Uh, however, until then, till Christ returns, um, we as a church, we're held responsible for God to help defend people who are defenseless. You know, for example, there's a lot of churches that don't even talk about abortion. But if you watch my YouTube mm -hmm. videos or you, if you take time to visit there, I done a video about um, abortion. Um, I'm not afraid to offend people with truth. Because you know what? Human life is precious. And God died for every human being. So we should defend and protect human life. Amen. So, and I think every, I think all true Christians should be pro-life. Anyways, don't want to get too political. I want to stay focused on the sermon. So sorry for no rabbit trail. But, okay. Isaiah 117. Um, so in verse 17, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow, and followed by Psalms 8, 2, 3, 4, defend the poor and the fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and, and needy, deliver the poor and the needy, rid them out of the land of the wicked. So actually it is the church's responsibility, if you are a Christian today, that you are the church, you are the body of Christ. It's not based on your domination. It's not based on the physical building. If you believe in Jesus, you are the church. The church is the people. And therefore, it's all of our responsibility as Christians to help meet people who are in need. That is a life God intended that will help those who are in need and who are poor. It's what the early church fathers did. And um, not like the Americanized Christianity that's um, here in the West. That's very narcissistic. We're focused on ourselves and don't care about anyone else around us. I'm talking about true biblical Christianity is laying yourself, um, put yourself before others, laying your life down for Christ and for others, the way the early church actually lived. And that's a revival I pray, um, not only rec room, but also people in their personal lives, we can see that happening. Amen. So um, 1 Thessalonians 2 4. But as as you were allowed God to put in the trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing to men, but God who tries our heart. Did you know, and this is Paul that wrote this, that as Christians, do you know that God entrusted you with the gospel? You see, when you get saved, not just you're not just tending a um, another pew in a seat. You're actually called to take action. As believers, we're called to the front lines. We're supposed to preach the gospel against the spiritual forces and, you know, principalities and rulers of darkness. We're supposed to actually show and demonstrate love of Christ before others. Regardless how people respond to it, we're supposed to do it in love. Right? So God entrusts us with the gospel. And when if you heard the gospel and you got saved and you're a Christian, God has trusted you to protect the gospel and spread the gospel. God has commissioned all of us to do that. It's a fact, it's a command, and not to do so uh, would be following my next sermon point, it's a sin. So silence is also sin um, when we don't preach a gospel to a sinner. Now I want to throw some disclaimers on there. Some some of you are probably wondering, well, uh, I, I might heard a gospel, or it might have been a while, but I don't know how do I share my faith um, with other people. I can definitely help you with that and I might come up with videos how to share your faith on my channel so stay tuned for that but if you want to start I'll say start somewhere pray um, you can start by praying for people in rec room start a conversation get what their thoughts are um, be kind be respectful um, don't be forceful if people don't want to hear it don't force it on them but go on to the next person because you know what that next person that God will lead you. It might be a person ready to hear and receive the gospel. Amen. So, hey, nice to meet you, Fallout Boy. Welcome. Thanks for visiting. Welcome. So, and I'll say this, to share your faith, basically, how does someone share the gospel with you? And in fact, I'm going to share you um, my gospel message at the very end. But you can literally start with a single verse and say, Lord, Help me as and bold me to share my faith with others. Let them hear about Christ. Help people have the opportunity to be saved and how to get to heaven. Right? Give people a chance. Right? People have the right to at least hear 
it's up to that person if they want to accept it or reject the message, right? But as Christians, we're supposed to simply just invite. That's all we're do that's all we're really doing when we're talking to Jesus. We're just giving them an invitation. They can accept it or reject it. It's up to that person. But I'll encourage you, start with John 3.16. Memorize that verse, right? And it's and then talk to people, you know, about Jesus and what he did for you. And all you gotta do is just believe what he did. Amen, Fall out Boy, amen. Okay, um, okay, my verse for that on my last sermon note is Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So guys, so there is that's one and there's many verses. But God has commanded us, every single Christian, to go out and preach the gospel. And you know what? Don't worry about what you need to say or what you need to do. Um, I think there's a verse in the Bible that says, um, Jesus said, don't worry what you say for as the Spirit will they'll give you the things to say. Right? So the uh, main thing is God wants you to just go. Start with somewhere. And you know what? <clears throat> Experience is the best teacher you can get. You learn simply by doing. Sometimes you learn from mistakes. Or you can learn from your other Christians who are... Um, who do witnessing um, for a while, and they can um, lead you and guide you, give you some tips. I know I've been preaching rec room for a good number of years now in evangelism. I can give you some of my wisdom experiences, but the best thing is just go out there, you know. Strike a conversation. You never know what God will do, right? Trust God. He will guide you what things you need to do and what you need to say. But most importantly, it helps to know the Bible. It helps if you know a couple of verses, um, when you go lead someone to the Lord, um, it can come really handy. But the best thing is, I think the first start is, do you have desire to win the loss? That's the first question. Do I even care about people next to me or person right from me? What if the person you talk to might be your best friend? Hey, young uh, yak, yeah, well, yeah, well, great time to start cracking that Bible open, right? Amen. Um, and let God lead you. Amen. So. What if your friend or relative was their last day, you know, and you have not told them about Christ? What a tragedy that must be to know they have opportunity, and yet you never give it to them. You never know. There's people, I can tell you, that I didn't think they were going to get saved, and they did. And then there's times where I thought people got saved, and they didn't get saved. Either way, we're supposed to give the gospel. Paul said in the Bible, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those um, who did not believe, right? For those who are unbelief. So, I pray that be for all of us, myself included, that I at least get people opportunity to at least hear the gospel. Because you know what? You may never know. Um, I heard testimonies where people heard about um, Jesus and how to get saved, how to get to heaven. And just later, years down the road, they got saved later on. And I heard some people didn't get saved until their death breath, before their last breath, they decided to call on Jesus. So you never know what God will do behind the scenes. So don't be discouraged if you don't see the results right away. In fact, the Bible says some plant seeds and some water, but God brings increase. And you'd be blown away what people God will lead you. you you'll see how God will use you and people you run into your life. You'll hear some credible stories from people from all walks of life. And I have to say... Um, Sharing the gospel has brought me more adventures of a lifetime. It really has. Oh man, I got countless stories. Okay, but anyways, let me end with a simple gospel message. Now we're talking about it. And I know the sermon is a little short because I want to leave time for Q&A. Okay, so here I'm going to give you guys the gospel. Um, it's, it's modified to make it very simple. And that's my first advice to you. Make the gospel simple where a child can understand it. If it's too complicated, then you probably don't have the gospel, or you're, you're just making it harder than it needs to be. Okay, so here's the gospel message. And uh, here's something you guys can ask yourself, right? Now, is it true that you heard all your life how Christ died on the cross, and he paid for sins of the whole world? Some of you may have heard of that today, you know. And um, if you haven't, um, yep, Christ died in the sins of the whole world. Now, I, I want you guys who are listening to think about that for one minute. Um, if he paid for his sins of the whole world, yours, mine, and everybody, then why should we go to hell? 
right? They sure do. If he paid for sin that he already paid for, right? And I want you guys to think about that a little bit further, what that means, right? God's loved you so much, every single one of you. My, he loved you guys so much. He'd rather die than to live without you. See, God loves you so much, he paid for all your sins. He came back from the dead, and the only thing God wants you to do to go to heaven is to believe that he did for you. Now, it's something you need to ask yourself, can you handle that? Can you handle what God did for you, for the Son, Jesus Christ? Jesus, who died on the sin, on cross for your sins, who was buried and rose again. Yeah, I'm talking about Jesus, Rogers, yeah. Yeah, can you believe that Jesus did that? Now, if you believe that, will you trust Christ right now as your Savior? Can you do that in your in your own heart? Will you believe on Him? Mics don't have to be open. Mics can be muted. You can call on God right now, even in your own heart. You just need to believe that He did it for you. And the moment you believe, God said in His Word that He'll give you a free gift, eternal life, right now, if you believe. And if it's eternal life, how long do you think that'll last for? That will last. It'll be forever, right? Because it's eternal life. Right? So this gift of God's arm for you, it lasts forever. And all your sins are paid for. So where do we go when you die if all your sins are paid for and this life goes forever? Anyone have that idea? Those who've been listening? <laughs> Before I tell you the answer. Okay, so if, if Christ paid all your sins and you believed on him and he gives you everlasting life, heaven, absolutely, plug God right, heaven. Right, and the reason you go to heaven is because you don't have any sins you have to pay for because Jesus paid for them for you. And you know what? You won't go to hell for future sins because Jesus paid for those too. And John 4, I'm sorry, John 6, 47, very, very, I say unto you, he that believe on me have everlasting life. So I invite you guys today, would you believe on Christ? Would you trust in Him? Trust that He died on the cross for your sin. He was buried and rose again. If you believe that Jesus paid for all your sins and future sins, you are forever saved and you're God's child and you're saved again. The moment you believe that. So, amen. I pray you guys will do that today. Um, if you want to know more, you can definitely talk to me after service. I can definitely elaborate on some things. But all you have to do in Acts 16.31, believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Just trust him. Trust he did it for you to get you to heaven. And nothing else is required. Just believe on Jesus. That simple. All right. That's transition now to Q&A. Um, some of you might been new to join here. I uh, did a sin of silence. You can type in chat. And um, yeah, go ahead, Fall Boy. You can type in chat. And you guys type any questions you have here on the message. Or I'll take any questions about the Bible, Christianity in general. I'll take those questions as well. Good question. So hell exists, right? As horrible as that thought may be. Um, it's because um, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, right? It produces death. Hell is spiritual death. That is the result of being separated from God, right? And then why will God send people there? Well, the only reason people, God will send people there is if who, people who refuse to believe on Jesus. That's the only condition that will send them there if they don't trust in Christ. The um, reason why God has that is because God's holy, right? And he's a good judge. If you want to put it this way, Fall Boy, in, in a courtroom, if someone's guilty of a crime and the criminal says you honor I know I've done these things, but, you know, I do good deeds, too, so you should admit, just, you know, just forget about my crimes that I did. Right? A judge cannot let that go. The judge might say, great, that's good you did good things, you should do those things, but that does not dismiss the fact you broke the law, and now you have to be punished according to the law, because that's what good judges do. Same thing, God is a good judge, and he has to punish sin. In fact, it's in his nature, because... There is no sin in God in his presence, and sin cannot dwell in God's presence. Right? So that's the result of sin is to be separated from God. Uh, Jigsaw, I don't know if it'd be, it'd be torturous like that. It would just say it would be a lake of fire. If you ever touch a hot stove and burn your finger one time, and you, 
imagine that pain, but multiply that by a billion. You might have an idea what hell might be like, but it goes on forever. Um, obviously, bad place, right? But God said, believe on Jesus, and you don't have to worry about that place. So, good question. Um, let's see. Just a Christian, if you don't live with God on earth, you won't live with heaven. Yeah, yep. Um, I think it's part of the Lord's Prayer. Um, thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, yep, God is omnipresent, so he is in the earth as well. So, yep, I, I agree with that. Okay, uh, Rangers, let's see what your questions have. You know that it is not sent to be homosexual. Homosexuality has never been mentioned in the Bible, and most precise have said, have ever said it's okay. Um, so that's not true. Now, I will say this. The word homosexuality, right, is not in the Bible. And you're correct on that. But in Romans, think chapter 1, verses 28, um, it describes the nature of the homosexual act. And Paul argues it's go against nature, and therefore it is sin. So it is clear. And someone mentioned Lithuania 2013. That's a good reference to the Old Testament law. Um, it is sin. Uh, I can bring it up to you when we read it. Um, I'll do New Testament cause let me bring it up to you. I can read it for you. Or find a verse for you. <clears throat> no, this is not descriptive. Uh, I'm purely... This is just me talking here. Um, it's just... I had a lot of this question before, Ro Rogers. Like, on, like, people ask me these questions all the time, actually. <laughs> That's why I'm like... I know the answer for it. But it does make clear. Let me fi find a verse for you. Romans 1, I think it's 28. Well, I'll find it for you. What's it start? Okay, I'll, I'll read it for you real quick. Um, Romans 1, 26. For, for this cause, God gave him up to foul affection. And listen to this. It describes the act, which what we use as homosexuality, but it talks about a sexual act as being immoral. And this is what described. For even their women did change the natural use into which is against nature. And verse 27, Likewise, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, working which is unseemly, receiving themselves the repentance of their error which is met. So, even though the word homosexuality is not in the Bible, the act or the nature as being described, it does say it is a sin. And Paul, apostles, make an argument it's going against nature itself. Um, it's unnatural, and it's based on lust, according to the Bible. Um, so yeah, that's what the Bible says. Okay, sorry, you guys had other questions. True feelings, yeah. There's a verse about Fred that said, Let God be true and every man a liar. So amen, truth. Let me see, any new newcomers, new feelings? I'll disagree, Mountain Dew. Homosexuality, you can do your research. Um, is the most toxic community out there, and the most STDs, and a lot of people do die um young age. Uh, you can do your research on it. I don't have articles with me, but I could probably send it to you. Okay, who said my name real quick? Conductor? You said something? This man has a question. Do you type in the chat already? Let me see if I find it. I don't know, he's raising his hand. You want to type in chat what your question is real quick? I'm not going to turn mics on just because there's a lot of um, people here, and it tend to be very overwhelming when people are talking to each other over each other. Okay, um, oh, so any son, if you type in chat, I'll try to get to your question. I'll I'll keep on it. Let's see here. Um, most priests and priests are humans. And humans flaw get things wrong. Yeah, I agree with that statement. Scrolling through the chat here. He wants to know if mugging is a sin. You mean beating people up to steal their money and stuff? Yeah, absolutely it's a sin. Here's the thing, this will help you, um oh now? Nah? Uh and I misunderstood that question. I am so sorry the media looks. 
Oh, are you talking about pride? Yeah, pride's a sin. Being better than anyone else. Um, yeah, that is a sin. In fact, pride is a deadly sin. Um, pride is actually what led the devil to get kicked out of heaven. Um, God hates pride. It says God resists the proud in heart, but he gives grace to the humble. Yeah, God hates pride. What like gay pride? Um, yeah, that's funny you brought that up. Um, it's funny they have pride in it, in gay pride parades, right? Because um, they're all about themselves. They don't care about people. They're based on pride. Love of self and their community. They kind of disregard other people's communities. But anyways, I know they're probably homosexual. You probably disagree with me, but I have homosexual friends, and they told me stories, and they all will disagree with you. They, they told me some bad stories from that community. Here at Rec Room, too. Okay, Bobby no knows. So let me see what you say here. I heard recently about 100 years rain on Earth. Some coming. Yeah, um, I need to find that verse on Bobby no knows, but just say, in, it's in the book of Revelations. Um, after the first rapture happens, right, those who, are, who believe in Christ will get raptured up, and then God will, you know, pour his judgments and his wrath on the Earth our physical earth that we're in right now, when Christ returns. And then Christ is going to um, establish his kingdom, um, the holy temple in, in the earth, and we're going to reign with Jesus for 1,000 years um, while the devil's locked up in the abyss or in darkness. But then after a 1,000-year reign, the Bible says the devil will be released from the abyss, from the prison cell, and then he's going to deceive the whole world um, and it's going to be a final um, standoff with the world versus God. Devil's going to see the whole world to fight against God, and there's going to be a little battle known as the Battle of Armageddon, and basically God kills everybody, takes them out. Right? And then we get into the story, um, and then God will judge um, the dead people who were killed in that battle. God took them out, so fire came from heaven and, 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 and engulfed everybody that opposed them. And then God will judge, does his final judgment. The books were open, and those names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We get cast, cast into a lake of fire. And it says even hell and death were cast into a lake of fire. So hell is actually a small holding place when people die. But hell is also like the prison. It's now the torment's greater and judgment's greater, and God's wrath is much greater. So, but that's the final judgment. And that's where the devil and his beasts and false prophets will be thrown into the lake of fire um, after that. And then we get the new heaven and new earth. And that's pretty much the summary I simplified for you. Is lust a sin? Yes. It is according to the Bible. And here, yeah, so here, um, I'll give you something. Jesus gave a principle, right? That kind of helps out. No. He said, um, no. he summarized all God's laws in these two simple commandments. Jesus said, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Basically, with every fiber of your being, love God with everything that you are. And then, he said, love your neighbor as yourself. So, example, if I'm lusting for that person, do I really love that person? Is that love? No. I'm I'm using that person for my personal pleasure. I'm not doing it for a benefit of that person. So you get it? So Tricky Tom, um everybody struggles with lust. Um it's why and here's a point too. It's not to um point fingers at anybody. I'm guilty as well. I'm not without sin. We're all um have sin and from short of glory to God. But therefore we need a savior, right? We all broken God's commandments. We all um, lie, steal, cheated, lusted, whatever, fill in the blank, right? But Christ came and, and died for our sins, right? Christ is the only one that filled God's law perfectly. So, and that's the point why I'm here today. Believe in Christ and your sins can be forgiven no matter what that sin is. Now, on that note, um, amen, you know, yeah, yeah, only God is perfect. But I will say sin does have consequences. So, for example, say you lived a, a bad life. And then you, you believe in Jesus, you became, you became a Christian. You might still have to deal the consequences of that sin, though. 
even though you're forgiven um, forever, you still have to deal with the consequences of that sin here on the earth, right? If you kill somebody, you have to go to jail. And that's, that loved one, that that's someone that you may murder to, will have to live without their loved ones from now on. You took away their peace and joy. That can't be undone. So sin doesn't affect you, it affects others around you. In fact, it affects all God's creation. And that's why we live in a messed up world with a lot of suffering. But God has promised in the Bible that Jesus will return and he'll make things all, all things right. And there'll be a place with no more, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering. And we'll get the new heaven, new earth. That hasn't happened yet, but that day will happen. All right, guys, AR questions before we wrap up in closing here. Uh, I got a question for you, people. Yeah, what's up, Rev? So, about Revelation, relations. Okay. Question. What is the millennial rapture? I th oh, gosh, there's so many. I think the, the millennial rapture is a, a view that after Christ reigns on the earth, then they say a rapture will happen. Which does not make any sense, and the Bible does not teach that. I don't know how people come to that conclusion. Because um, it makes it clear um, the rapture happens when Christ returns. But anyways, there's that argument. I hope I answered your question, Riff. Yeah. The reason why I ask is because there's a lot of uh, church that believe sure, in scrolly. the rapture uh, mid, pre, you know what I mean. It yeah. just gets very confusing when you talk to different churches about this. Yeah. So, Rev, I might help answer your question because your question might help everyone else, too. Um, you got your two accounts. You got your art account here, I see. Try and confuse me. <laughs> Anyways. Well, okay, thankful. <laughs> no, I have my other account in here for a reason, though. I'm just testing something real quick. Gotcha. Okay, no problem. Um, So, when it comes, um, you're going to hear a lot of different theological discussions. Uh, we had a debate here not long ago. I had a debate a uh, a civil debate of against a Calvinist. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. But um, best thing is go to the Bible, see what the people are saying, what scriptures they're using, and read that scripture and the contents. You might have to read a whole chapter, you know how that verse is used, and then you can see, oh well, that Bible verse is actually talking about this, and that person's misquoting it. So it's basically the more you know the Bible. Um, the more you can see that people were just abusing God's word and mishandling it. So, yeah, you can give me a gift if you want. Um, thank you, by the way. Sure, ask away, tricky man. Bond, sorry. Yeah, we're still doing Q and A. Oh, Joe Wu, I see your chat too. I want to address it real quick. Blasphemy is on the one of the worst sins. Yes, but I want to elaborate on that. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Um, we see that in a passage when Jesus first cast that judgment, it was towards the um, religious Pharisees. And what the religious Pharisees, they basically called Jesus the devil. They said Jesus is Satan. Basically, they said God's a devil. Right? That's <laughs> and and then Jesus cast judgment, they'll never they'll never go to heaven, they'll, they'll be in hell. Jesus said, you're just going to hell, period. That's what God said to them. Um, now, can Christians commit, to, commit that today? I do not believe so, and I can tell you my reasoning why that is. First off, when you, someone who's a Christian, they acknowledge they're a sinner, and they acknowledge they do deserve hell, but they trust in Jesus to pay for their sins, right? First off, you have to be very humble to believe that in the first place, to get saved. Therefore, logically follows, why would you call God Satan if you believe he's God first, for one, and you believe that you're not a good person, but you believe God's good? So I don't think a person is going to do that. Now, a sin, I think, that's similar to what the Pharisees committed is a sin of unbelief. So basically, um, someone who um, rejected the gospel, does not believe in Jesus, and they die in their sins, and they go to hell, that's kind of like the same way as blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It's basically just resisting God to a point you, you will not get saved. Because you just don't want God in your life. That's basically the heart of the matter. But you don't have to worry about that, John Doe. If you believe in Christ, you have not committed this sin. Um, you are saved. So you definitely, but a lot of people do get confused on that passage. Okay, then we go back to the chat here. 
Uh, see here is not trollish chat. No, I'm not a pope. Um, I'm a Bible believing Christian, and um, we're not Catholic, so I'm just a preacher. Preaches the Bible. Um, when did God get betrayed? Um, it's a story when um, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, um, he betrayed Jesus when the Pharisees um, paid him silver. It's actually where the term blood money came from, and he actually not Mormon Christian. And um, yeah, so Judas is one that betrayed Jesus, and is all is all part of Bible prophecy. God already knew it. Jesus said to his disciples, "One of you will betray me." He said, "One of you is of the devil." And Judas Scarlet um, was not saved. He he faked it all his time, and I believe he's in hell today. Um, but yeah, he helped kill God, which is Jesus. So yeah, can that is, are there fake Christians today? Absolutely, is a lot of Judas today, of course. Um, but yeah, you know them um, by their fruits, and you know them. And here's a good giveaway: if you want to know someone safe, ask them what they believe, and they'll tell you everything about them. Because people will um, say what they believe. Almost always. Unless they're lying to you. I mean, you can't know that for sure. Only God would know, right? But generally speaking, people will say what they believe. Most people don't have problems saying what they believe. <laughs> so. Okay, I'll try set. Yep. Okay, Um. thanks for his gift. God bless you. Um. Please don't cuss in chat, please. Just follow the record code conduct. I'm Christian Room. This I just had to be respectful for that. Thank you. A or question C. Oh, why is the Bible the correct interpretation of God? Sappy, um, that could be a good long conversation. Um, but I'll give you a short answer. Um, the Bible has more evidences to back it up for its claims than any other book ever. Um, one evidence I'll give you is the Bible has more. Um, manuscripts, I'll explain what that means in a minute, than any other book in history. Manuscripts is basically just means um, handwritten copies to the original document. So the more handwritten copies you have, the more you can verify your source that it's true, historical and accurate. The Bible has more manuscripts than any other book ever written in human history. That's one question. But I mean, you can go deep study, um, you can also study the Bible how um, has um, fulfilled over 500 prophecies in the future to the T. No book has ever done that in history. And I could go on and on and on. Um, but I don't want I don't want to dismiss other people have questions still want to address. Um, but I, I can give you a good resource. Um, Cross Talk um, Ministries on YouTube talks a lot about that. On um, the evidence for God and the Bible and stuff. Okay, what are your thoughts on pre-tribulation? Bobby no knows I'm pre-trib. I agree with it, that theology. Um, I believe that we're going to get raptured before um, the Antichrist and before um, it gets bad. So so get saved today and don't worry about that. So, Amen? Alright, if you have a different religion, will you hypothetically center? Um, so the Bible says we're all sinners. We're sinners by birth. And we're sinner also by what we did and how we live our life. Um, we broke every commandment. And basically, if you broke something, a simple command from the Bible, that's a sin. If you lied, that's a sin. And according to God's standard, if you sinned as one time your whole life, that's enough to send someone to hell. But you believe in Jesus to be saved, that he paid for all your sins. And God of the Bible, he said he's the only true God. You must worship in him alone. And he said there is no other gods. And little boy, you're not the only one. I'm a sinner too. Um, I'm just a sinner saved by God's grace. That's all. There's nothing special about me. Uh, I sin every day, even unaware. Um, but, you know, God paid for my sins, and I try to live a righteous life, even though it's not perfect. But, hey, I, I trust in Jesus to get me to heaven. So, All right, Man Wolf 27 why do we push... I get you meant put all our sins onto the one man just because he's God's son... When steel to deal with our problems together. Well, Man Wolf, um, there's a lack of understanding. 
no one has even found a solution for sin, right? For example, um, someone's trying to figure out how to solve, um, you no, know, say trash, right, and recycling, but yet you have multiple people who don't recycle, and you know we're you know destroying our environment. Um, the problem is. Human beings, we sin. We love our sin. We love to do evil. It's in our nature to do it. And you can't stop human nature. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. There is no solution for it other than Christ. And the reason we put our faith on, um, onto one man, Jesus, is because that's God's solution. What God could have done, God, couldn't, God can get rid of all sin and all evil. He can throw the whole human race into a lake of fire and hell right now. That'll get rid of evil, because we're all evil. But God doesn't want to do that. He wants people to go to heaven. So that's why he died. Ah, uh, wait, but Carl, I'm going to get to my testimony. So. Um, any other questions? Before I do, I'm going to get my testimony here. One for me. So if I have my own religion, what would I do with it? Um, I encourage you to get the right religion. Um which is God, which is Jesus Christ, give yourself a Bible and get saved today. Um, because I don't want to stand and see you go to hell um, because I didn't tell you how to get saved. So believe on Jesus and get saved today. Because we're all going to meet God eventually. And you're going to see I told you the truth. So don't don't reject it. I didn't say I didn't warn you. I love you enough to tell you the truth even if you hate me. So, which I'm cool with. Sorry, I, I, I'm the guy... I know my preaching might seem harsh, but I'm the guy that doesn't take the band-aid off um, gently. I just put the band-aid off and give you a solution right away. <laughs> so, I just tell you, tell you true straight, you know. Thank you, Tricky Bond, but you know, um, I got you see good qualities in me, but honestly, ain't good as in me. It comes from God. This is God's work he did in me, so. Thank you, White Boy. Carl, so I guess I can give you just anyone um, might be want to hear, I guess, my story. I'll try to keep it short. I don't want to bore you with death of stories. I take, let me take this question and I can get in my testimony. Is it wrong to date an unbeliever hoping to lead them to Jesus Christianity, if not break up with them? All right, so true feelings. It's not wise to date an unbeliever. And I can tell you why. One, because here's the same people um, are their own persons. They have their own beliefs. And beliefs are very important in people, right? Beliefs is how, how we, we see the world and it shapes who we are, right? And eventually there's going to be conflict. And the bottom line is, um, Paul does say you, um, you can marry an unbeliever, Um and you are sanctified by God. But there's complications comes with that. What if the person never comes to Christ? Because by the day, people have free will to choose. And that person may never choose to believe. You know? So, but if I ask beforehand and they're open mind to Christianity, I'll still say, now truth, I'm not your pastor. Make that clear. I can give you advice. Um, if you attend a local church, run it for your pastor, obviously. But I will say no. It, it's very unwise. Uh, you're, you're, pay, you're playing with fire. Um, and you've seen this. Um, here's one way. Whoever person you're, you're dating, you might think you might try to convert them to Christianity, but they might convert you to be an atheist. They want you to leave your, your God and your religion. How you know that's not going on that, that way too, you know? So basically, this is how I handle it. Before, and I'm currently, just so you guys know, um, so pray for her, plant seeds, um, scroll, yeah. So truth, definitely pray, ask God. If he wants a relationship, ask your pastor, ask wise Christians around you. Be surrounded by wise counsel. And and now, um, what is it? See truth, here's, here's the dangers. That's pride right there. The Bible says, be careful if he thinks he's standing, at least he should fall. <laughs> the devil can get anybody, man. He can get you, he can get me. We need to watch what we're doing. And not saying she's from the devil, but the devil can send people in your way um, to not love God. And here's the thing, 
if you truly loved her or him or whoever your partner is, I don't know. Sorry if I didn't give you the pronoun, right pronoun, so forgive me on that. You will give them the gospel. I always say that. Have you given them the gospel? Have you told them about Jesus? And if they want to be with you after you told them that, then all right, by all means, I guess you can go along with it. But I strongly discourage it. Um, I'm seeing you a lot of heartache. I'm I'm seeing you a lot of pain. You're going to thank me later. Because I, I try to do that before. I try to do, they call it missionary dating, by the way. It's a term. I try to date somebody and hope they'll convert. But to be honest, you can't convert a person. Only God can do that. Is their choice. Have you ever thought that you could be wrong instead? Oh, I'm just I'm just a man in a day, but God's the one who's right, so go to his word. Oh, future reference. If you're not in a relationship, I'll say no, not yet. I'll, I'll say find yourself a God-fearing woman. Not saying she won't get saved later on. Not saying maybe she will not be your future spouse. Right, Rev says do not be, the Bible says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Um, but don't hope on that. Um, pray, ask God. Um, I shall encourage you to find yourself a God-fearing, praying woman and date to be married. Don't date for sex if you're a Christian. That's wrong. And um, do it for a, pursuit of, for a pursuit of marriage. And God will bless that. Yeah, I know I'm old-fashioned, but you know what? Bible's old-fashioned, and I'm cool with that. Because God knows what's best for us. True, people can change young yaks, so um, you never know. Pray for her. Um, show love of Christ. Um, but if she gets saved by being around me, then I can date. Here's the truth. What if she never does? Because, you know, you have to think about that. 